Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Paul and I'm an indie game developer. As you can see, we're making a sword fighting game called Armed and Armored. It has mountain blade like combat system. I know, there is already a lot mountain blade like games with directional attack slash defense combat system. Uh, for example, Mordhau, Chivalry, Chivalry 2, Kingdom Come, and maybe For Honor. And no need to mention, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord was released a couple years ago. So you may ask, why bother? Well, me and my teammates uh, are huge medieval armor fans. And we feel kind of disappointed of how medieval armors are represented in video games, especially Mountain Blade-like games. Uh, yes, I know Exanima is a great game with pretty realistic armors, uh, but the control is, um, yeah, not my type. So you may notice in this footage, the most obvious difference we made in our game is to add armors with real-time physics colliders. And trust me, it's a lot harder than I originally saw. Uh, but we finally did it. To defeat a heavily armored opponent, you can try explore the vulnerable gaps between armor pieces, like this. So what you're watching right now is a very early version laminar armor in our game. It is based on 12th to 13th century Chinese slash Mongolian laminar armor, but of course it is heavily modified to fit our character and physics engine. We're planning to replace this armor model, but we don't have the resource yet. As you can see here, stabbing and cutting will be blocked by the armor, and the character will suffer no damage at all. But a thrust to this gap on his neck... ...or this eye peak hole... ...will finish the job. Well, it does take some luck to land a fatal hit, but intentionally aiming at those gaps would increase the probability making such a hit. And using a nimble weapon will allow you to hit your opponent more often, so maybe using a dagger stabbing the gap repeatedly might work. Well, we don't have a dagger in our game yet. But I would assume maybe a great anti-armor combination might be wearing heavy armor yourself while wielding a dagger. I don't know, it could be fun. And of course you can try to destroy a piece of armor block by repeatedly hitting it. But it does take some time though if you're using a light weapon like this arming sword. This armor, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe is based on 16th or 17th century Japanese samurai armor. I'm not quite familiar with samurai armor though. And if you don't have the patience, then using a heavy blunt weapon like a warhammer or mace will make this process faster. Of course, those weapons are less nimble and will take away more of your attack strength. Here, by the way, is a 17th century Spanish plate armor. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm just a programmer, a computer nerd if you may. My teammate is the history geek. As you can see, the chest plate starts to deform after several blows from the maze and will eventually be knocked apart. As for brigandines, here is a 16th, 17th century Chinese brigandine. This armor is still under development. There are some missing parts, but still, I want to show you guys how this armor works. We're using a Unity asset called OB Cloth. On the surface, you can see the soft cloth moving with the character. But underneath, there are hidden armor plates. And after receiving enough damage, the damage will start to tear cloth apart. 
the underneath armor plate will also start to lose constraint. Thus, eventually, reveal his unprotected torso. So, the idea of weapon and armor choices in our game is not to force players to do the painful math, such as oh, how much DPS of a weapon or how much damage reduce I can get from a suit of armor. Uh, the idea is to allow players to make different strategic or tactical decisions. Like, for example, maybe I'm an agile player, like a ninja. I prefer fast and accurate attacks. Or maybe you're a barbarian player. You prefer heavy and dumb weapons. You don't want to bother with precision aiming or edge alignment. And yes, we have edge alignment in our game. More on that later. So, although wearing heavy armor in our game is fun, it makes you feel like a tank rolling across enemy lines. But I personally prefer the excitement of a fight with only light armors or even no armor at all. Uh, here's the thing that bothers me about other Mountain Blade like games the slow pace. I know the idea is to give players fair enough time to react to enemy attacks, especially with directional attack slash defense slash chambering system. You want the player on the defense side have time to pick up which direction the attack is coming from, then react accordingly. Most sword fighting games want to give players the time to react, but to me, it just feels wrong. Well, I used to practice boxing and kickboxing a lot. Matter of fact, I want to be a champ at some point of my life. Yeah, I was young and stupid and got my ass kicked a lot. Uh, and I played HEMA a couple times too, borrowing my friend's gear. It's fun, but too expensive to me. My teammate, however, he is a huge HEMA fan. He used to practice fencing in longsword a lot when he was living in UK. And we both have a same consensus. That is, in most martial art or combat sport, dominating the rhythm and controlling the pace is more important than reacting to individual attacks. So we increase the combat pace in our game as you can see in this gameplay and my personal feeling is it makes the combat more interesting here is me fighting an AI please ignore the ugly character model uh, we will replace him with better models uh, it's still a template character we call him the little gray guy so here is me caught little gray with a good timing and damaged his right arm you can see his injured arm is dropped down low. And here is me attacking with a bad timing and exposed my head to the enemy cut. Of course, judging the enemy attack direction is still relevant. But if you can't tell which way the attack is coming from, you can just move back. You can move back and forwards, back and forwards. Then after you feel you have the control over the rhythm, throw an attack at the right time. It'll do the job. Or maybe not. And of course, you cannot control the rhythm if you can't control the distance. It's funny to see many newbies in martial art always focusing on fancy moves and punching powers like Hey watch I can do the back spinning kick or hey watch how hard I can punch this bag Well no shame on that I used to do the same when I was a newbie But in a real fight it doesn't really take super complicated move with a super powerful punch to knock your opponent out Like Muhammad Ali's anchor punch is it difficult to throw in an anchor punch? Not really. It's only difficult to throw at the right time with the right distance. So another problem that bothers me with Mountain Blade-like games is that it doesn't have a good distance control mechanism. 
In stand-up combat sport, normally there's a referee who will separate fighters if they hang too close to each other for too long. Same with Hema fencing or Japanese kendo. Luckily, it's not that hard to do the same in the video games. All we gotta do is punishing players who stick too close to the opponent, also tell AI enemies to maintain reasonable distance from the player. So here's what we did. The character's weapon will only deliver damage when the blade contacts enemy body first. If his hand or arm made contact with enemy body or enemy weapon before the blade this, his attack will be cancelled as a punishment. You don't want to get too close to your opponent. Distance controlling in our game may take some practices, but it'll be fine when you get the hang of it. We also have some other features to make sure the combat happens in a healthy distance, but they're still in early development phase, and I may introduce them in future videos. So before I move on to other features, let me explain how the control input works. Of course, we're making it on PC platform for it now, so movement is WSAD. Aiming is mouse movement. Hold shift key to run. And to deliver a cut, all you gotta do is use your mouse cursor, aim at the target, then click and drag to input the cut direction. And to show you how did your input go, we'll draw the path of your input on the screen. And although it seems you may drag it to any directions, the game can only play cuts from 7 directions due to animation limits. So if you're familiar with Military Saber 6 cut, here is your number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, and number 6, plus a top-down cut. So totally 7 cuts. And when you click and drag, you don't really need to bother with a perfect 45 degree angle, for example, for number one cut. The system will calculate the nearest cut for you. But if you're using a blade weapon, you do want to drag the line as straight as possible, because that is your edge alignment input. As you can see here, if your edge alignment is perfect, the path will shown as red, it can deliver more damage to your target, if your edge alignment is horrible, the pass will shown as white and will produce less damage. Now, different weapons have different handling features. Some weapons are easier to control in terms of edge alignment, but if the weapon's physics geometry is not optimized for cutting, for example, a rapier or a battle axe, it will be very difficult to get a perfect edge alignment. Also, weapon physics is always active. Even if you're not holding the defense key, the weapon's physics geometry will still provide some protection. Anyway, that's just a small hint of our weapon handling features. In general, we don't write weapon property data directly like, oh, the damage is 10, the speed is 5. No, we don't do that. Everything is calculated based on weapon's geometry, like blade length, width, thickness, taper, curvature, pommel weight, and pommel position. And no, you can't end your enemy rightly. Then the system calculates the balance point, angular momentum, and a bunch of other properties. Then it finally concludes to damage, speed, strength needed, edge alignment factors, etc. 
the original idea is to have players design and custom their own swords or weapons, but it'll take too much time to complete such a system. I don't know. We'll see uh, depending on how many people are interested. Now, what else is in this game? Although not finished yet, we made a troop formation control system. We do plan to allow players to control a small team, maybe 10 to 20 men strong, maybe 50 tops. Uh, with Unity's physics engine, we can't fit too many fully armored characters in one battlefield. We're also planning to have a map slash mission editor, like the one in Arma series. It'll help us to make an open world campaign much easier. Yes, there will be an open world campaign, but only a small map. Maybe 30 to 50 square kilometers, and maybe later we'll release the editor to players to make their own missions too. And eventually we will have a multiplayer too. Uh, we've already made some multiplayer testing. I can practice with a friend, works fine. It's a Unity asset called Photon PUN2. It is a server client based network solution. I think I'm gonna change it to another P2P solution, maybe Photon Bolt. But again, I don't have the time to do that yet. As you can see, this project is still under early development, and I spent over two years on this project now. Uh, we spent most of our time and effort on making those features for armor physics, weapon physics, and combat system. Now, the reason we spent too much time on those features is because most of those features are pretty much unprecedented. Nobody ever done that before. We have to come up with our own solutions. Sometimes we run into bugs we need to address within a single frame. That's 1 60th of a second during 60 FPS gameplay. And we're finally at the point that we believe those features are done though. They are ready for production to the final game. I know our game doesn't look very attractive right now because we don't have a dedicated 3D artist. We're just a small indie team with three dudes. Me, I'm a programmer. Matter of fact, the only programmer on this project and one of the designer. I used to be a .NET web developer for many years. I quit my job like three years ago, and then started this project late 2019. One year later, another team member, his nickname is Hammer, joined me. And Hammer is the story writer, campaign designer, and gameplay designer. He is the history geek I was talking about. He chose the history background for our game, and he's the one making decisions of what type of armor, weapon, character we need, uh, because he's the one writing the story. Also, because he's more experienced than Hema, he'll be the one deciding combat pacing, weapon balancing, etc. Also, we have another team member. He's not willing to be named for now. He's a uh, part-time 3D artist. He's making textures and models for our armors, weapons, equipment, buildings, etc. Uh, he has a full-time job now, so we can't really bother him all the time. So, for us, the biggest problem is animation. I know there's a lot of 3D animation resources we can buy online, uh, but the problem is inconsistency. For example, Kubold. If you're a Unity developer, you may have seen his name on Unity Asset Store. He's also the animation artist of The Witcher 3, you may have heard of. Also, his new game, Hellish Quart, is awesome. Uh, but the animation he sells on Unity Asset Store, uh, they have some of the moves I need, but they also lack some of the moves I need. So I tried to make some of those animations myself, but let's just say I'm a terrible animator. And hiring a company to make animation is very expensive. We spent roughly $10,000 to make this set of single hand sword animation. And we need much more. Two-handed sword, pole arm, sword with a shield, katana, kung fu, you name it. Now, what do we really need is an investor. And no, we're not doing Kickstarter at this moment. 
our first choice would be to have a reliable and experienced investor. So we've been talking to some local investors. Some of them are interested, but they're also concerned. Here's the thing. Uh, we believe this game is not going to be a huge sellout. Like, uh, who are we selling to? What is the market? Hardcore HEMA fans? Hardcore medieval armor weapon history fans? That is relatively a small audience comparing to the entire gamers group. And many of you guys are already playing Mordhau, Mountain Blade, Chivalry, Hellish Court, and Kingdom Come, right? Also, you guys have pretty high standards too. I bet many of you are already nitpicking the inaccuracy in our armor and weapon models. Hey, I don't blame you. I'd love that if you guys could help us point out some of the model issues. And we will address them when we have the resource. So, what we can expect is to sell to only a fraction of that hardcore HEMA fan group. The only problem is, we don't know how big that is. It could be enough for us to survive and make our investor happy. Or maybe this audience is too small and we will never make it. So please, uh, just a show of hands, if you guys are interested in our project, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Share it with your friends and colleagues. Recommend this video to your favorite YouTubers. Oh, uh, by the way, if Metatron sees this video by any chance, I just want to say, hey man, congratulations. He, he just got married. He don't know me, but uh, I've been subscribed to his channel for years. I'm a big fan. I learned a lot from Metatron's channel. Best wishes to him and his wife. Maybe he'll never see this video or maybe he will. I don't know. Anyway, please, if you're a hardcore HEMA fan, a hardcore medieval armor weapon history fan, and you're interested in our project, like and subscribe, that's all I'm asking. Or if you have any salt, share it in the comment. Uh, even, even if you don't like our project, please, share your thought with us, help us improve. If we can get enough feedback from you guys, we can talk to those investors, say, hey, look, there is a market. There is a lot of people like this kind of a game. Uh, or, if I can get enough subscribers, it gives me enough confidence. I probably won't need an investor. I can, uh, I can get a reverse mortgage from my bank, or maybe I can sell my house. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe and healthy. Peace.